All right, so this video is going to be about uh, evidence of a chemical reaction. Some of this is going to be reviewed from like eighth grade or whatever, but I think it's important uh, that you understand this um, moving forward. All right, so let's get started. If I can figure out how to do this. All right, good. So chemical reactions versus physical reactions. So a physical reaction or a physical change is one in which the chemical only changes physically. That sounds kind of redundant, but there's not any new compounds made. So like if we boil water, right, you can put a pan of water on the stove and it turns from a liquid to just a gas, then it's not a new chemical, it's the same chemical. So here we have liquid water where the molecules are really, really close together. And then we have vapor, water vapor, or gas, H2O in the gas form, and they're just spread further apart. There's still water molecules. There's nothing new has happened here. Um, it's just there's more energy in the gas molecules so they spread further apart uh, than there are with the liquid molecules so that's not a chemical reaction all right it's just like if you tear a piece of paper it's still a piece of paper you haven't done anything to it now, if you set the piece of paper on fire and you burn it then it's undergone something different it's undergone a chemical change and so it's something completely different all right so chemical reactions versus physical reactions now a chemical reaction occurs when new compounds are formed so phase changes may result as well but the reactants are combining and are separating. So here we have uh, two H2s bonding with an oxygen to give us water, right? Water vapor. So um, here we have uh, the red molecules here are oxygen and the white ones are little hydrogen molecules. Remember they're diatomic, so they're always, they always come in pairs when they're by themselves. And then when it reacts and forms the product, we get uh, water vapor, right? And so we have these new things formed here. So they're completely different than anything that was a reactant, right? And they're chemically bonded to one another. They're not just mixed together in a pot. All right, so, um, and note, I showed a limiting reactant uh, process here. So if we have two hydrogen bonding with one oxygen, and we have one, two, three, four, five O2s here, right? And then we have, uh, let me change this. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogen, right? So we have five oxygen and six hydrogen. So from five oxygen, we could make 10 waters. We'll go over how to get that later. And from six hydrogen, we could get six waters. So only six waters can form because at that point we have no hydrogen. So here, all the hydrogen on this side, right? On this side is completely gone. And we have extra oxygen left over because we ran out of hydrogen. So it couldn't react anymore. Um, it's really important for you to be able to see this conceptually. They like to put these problems, especially something like this on the AP test in multiple choice questions, sometimes even as the beginning um, premise for a, an open-ended response question. <clears throat> All right, so um, like I said, um, if we looked at this, so if only we could make six waters, right? If we could only make six waters, then that would only require three oxygen. And since we had five to begin with, we have two oxygens left over, right? Because these two could have been together and these two could have been together and these two could have been together, right? The oxygen atoms. So it would have only taken three of them and that's why we have extra left over, if that makes sense. Hopefully it makes sense. All right, so next. Um, evidence of a chemical reaction, this should be old news to you, the production of heat and or light. So something being uh, caught on fire is a chemical reaction. Uh, the, the fire, the heat is a result of that reaction. Those are exothermic chemical reactions. Um, <clears throat> freezing water has to release heat. 
but ice is still just water molecules. So not always will it be a chemical reaction. Sometimes it can be result of a physical one if something is releasing heat, right? Because if you freeze water, it has to release heat, so that's exothermic. Um, but a lot of the time it will be, all right? A precipitate is formed. A precipitate is an insoluble compound, so that's ex example of a chemical reaction. A gas is evolved. All right, so the gas has to be a new compound. It can't just be um, liquid water boiling into vapor. All right, it has to be an actual new gas, like if we had uh, carbon or calcium carbonate. Here, let me write that reaction down here. All right, so if we have calcium carbonate, it can decompose into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gas. Um, so we would see this if we had that calcium carbonate, we would see this bubble up um, through water or something like that. We'd have some sort of liquid that it would bubble up through or we would just be capturing it on top of the solid product. All right, uh, color change occurs. Typically when a color change occurs, it's a new compound being formed. Not always, but a lot of the time it is. Um, and it doesn't really, the AP test doesn't really go into this. I just feel like it's something that you should know after you've taken a year or two of chemistry, you should be able to identify what.